Welcome to Off Grid Online. I'm MJ, your host, and I am going to attempt to make a solar panel today. Um, I'm, I got a lot of the ideas from Green Power Science on YouTube. Um, just you know, no affiliation or anything. I just I enjoy his videos, and, and uh, I just thought I'd give him credit since I got a lot of these ideas from him. So what I've done. What I, uh, I got my router and I got a 2x4 I ripped the 2x4 down the middle and I basically just routed out a groove inside of the, the 2x4 and then I made a window frame out of it I kind of put it together a little crudely uh, I was I was obviously rushing but I just wanted to build you know just I just wanted to um, give it a shot and this was all the wood that I had available it's really knotty it wasn't a good piece of wood to use but you know, I just wanted to give it a shot and see how it turns out. Uh, I'm sure it'll still be just as usable, it just won't be as pretty. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do, I got these from eBay. And as you can see, and uh, I, I'm sure you'll see on uh, Green Power Science as well, as these things are very, very fragile. They break very easily. and uh, But they are still usable, even though they're broken. You just need to... Um, make your connections on it. They, they actually have uh, something that's on Green Power Science which I have not gotten yet and I plan to use it in the future so I'm not going to break this anymore just to demonstrate. But um, They have the, the glue on style contact and um, so if you have some some pieces that don't have these um, spots that you can actually solder onto you can actually use that glue on contact cement to, uh, um, to make your connection. So I'm going to give that a shot. Um, I don't have, uh, let me see if I can grab a few that are not damaged. I just moved to Tennessee from Florida. I'm quite frankly surprised at how many of these actually survived the move. I'm going to probably just open a new pack just to, to get started. Alright, so now I'm unwrapping this set as carefully as possible so as not to, to break anymore. Alright, and... I made the window, I call it a window, but it's it's going to be my solar panel, so I should refer to it. I made the solar panel large enough to fit these cells with a very small gap in between the, the cells. I got these short tab ones. Um, they are partially tabbed and it's probably going to be a bad choice, but there was a good deal on them at the time, and I figured, what the heck. Um, it is probably going to make my job a lot harder, as I've heard, and uh, I don't doubt it, but we'll see how it goes. What I'm going to do is I'm going to attempt to secure these to the glass first before I do any of the soldering, only because these uh, pieces are already tabbed on the front and they have the piece sticking out I think I can get away with doing that I just lay them down and um, I can uh, just solder the backs on once once they're stable and in place that's my theory we'll see how it works okay so what I've done is I butted all my all these cells up against each other you need nine this way and four this way so your total will be uh, 36 okay so 36 cells in total is what you're gonna need uh, to make a, a standard 18 volt panel uh, the reason you go with 18 volts is because once you put the load on it it's gonna drop down um, you know depending on the temperature how hot they are and, and uh, how much light there is so you definitely want something you know a little stronger than the 14 volts because that's the the ideal 
charging voltage and your uh, charge controller will, will make sure it stays at that that uh, proper voltage. So anyway, I slid them all to one side and I measured and I what I did is I gave myself as much space as I could on the ends. Um, what that came up to is an eighth inch between each of these joints and that would leave me seven eighths of an inch on the top and seven eighths of an inch on the bottom which should be more than enough to run my bus line on, on the tops and on the bottoms. And then this direction, uh, I'm putting a quarter inch between them because you don't want this one touching this one, you know, because it's gonna, it'll end up messing up your, your voltage. What's gonna have to happen is you, you're putting them in series, all right, so half a volt will add up throughout the series. And I have the tabs facing this direction on this row They'll face that direction on the second row, that direction on the third row, and finally that direction on the fourth row. This isn't a way that, that uh, I saw on um, anybody else's website, but that's just because I'm being cheap. Uh, this is what I had on hand. I'm not sure how well this is going to work, but basically I just need these cells to stay in place long enough for me to solder them and to use the solar encapsulant. So what I did is I got a little a uh, glue gun that I borrowed from my wife is pink. It's not mine. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to um, see if I can just tack these in place. I'm not sure how well they will, how well this will work, of course. But uh, I would imagine that if I allow my encapsulant to to cover the glue, that I shouldn't have a problem with it then. So I have my uh, I have my square here on the edge. That's how I'm I'm gauging my distance here. And uh, I'll go ahead and start with the first one, just giving myself a little space. And you see, seven eighths of an inch. And I'll give myself that's uh, about three eighths of an inch there. Looks like. Might as well get it accurate. Yeah, three eighths of an inch, and there's seven eighths. And as I said, since, since I needed to hold the cell in place. Let me grab this glue gun. Okay. So far, so good. That looks like it worked out pretty well. You'll notice I have some gloves on, for those of you who don't know. Um, these solar cells, if you put any kind of grease on them, it shows very clearly, especially after you put some heat on it and try to solder it, you'll see fingerprints all over them. So I decided to put some gloves on to try to avoid that situation. This is working out really nice. I'm very pleased because keeping this still last time was the biggest problem that I had. And, uh, of course, I had to solder the other ends myself, the, the faces, I had to solder myself on the last panel I tried. And I'm trying these uh, um, half-tabbed ones. Uh, they're probably a lot cheaper now than they were when I bought these. But... Uh, this was a great deal at the time. I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it was it was significantly cheaper than than any of the ones that had the tabbing completely on it. Uh, I have found that I'm just going to t tack the corners. I initially started, you know, running down the whole edge, you know, I mean, putting some dabs here and there along the entire edge, but it looks like I can get away with using just the corners, let it harden a little bit, and move on. Seems to be working out really nicely. I like it a lot. Okay, well, 
Well, that was uh, very simple, actually. I, it was a lot easier than I expected it to be. And uh, now I'm ready to go ahead and test these cells before I go ahead and uh, solder them. Now, granted, most people would tell you to check them first. Uh, try to get them within the same voltage range and all that stuff. I'm not personally too worried about it. Um, I did the the other panels that I did. They performed pretty decently. Yes, if you do have one bad cell, it'll kill your whole system. But uh, that's why I do I do check them to make sure that they're at least the right voltage, and um, before I go ahead and solder everything. So that's what I'm gonna do now, and uh, it's actually pretty simple, you know, as far as how to do it. Um, I might have to use my spotlight up here, but basically what I do is I just put the light under the, the uh, glass right onto the cell so that way you know it, it has uh, light to generate power and I have the uh, two contacts available on each cell so that's all I need in order to, to go ahead and test it out so let's go ahead and do that and see what kind of voltage we're getting.